Tonight on the tagline, you'll believe that two random nincompoops from Austin, Texas can host a YouTube show. Or probably not. Likely <laughs> not. We'll see. But, uh, but uh, stick around anyway. And maybe the other one won't interrupt the first one while he's trying to make a joke. Sorry. What's going on, everybody? It is Tuesday night, 9.30 p.m. Central Times. That means it is time for the tagline. <laughs> Welcome to the show. We are the Cine Fanatics. My name is Robert Adams. I'm Chris Adams. And we have a show for you because that's what we do at this time every Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome to the tagline, the show where we step on each other's feet all the time. <laughs> we do that. Hey, here's the thing. We're brothers. We have to do that. Y'all want to know, like like personality and how we interact like people want to get to know us i guess maybe sort of i don't know why but if you want to get that's what we do we're brothers we step on each other's toes all the time that's why he has his room and i have mine a lot less toe stepping in the future we're not in a one bedroom where we have to share a bedroom (laughs) (laughs) oh that'd be awkward (laughs) you would be seeing wonders that you wish you never saw (laughs) this channel would have ended a long time ago and murder probably would have taken place (laughs) this would have been a was investigation fanatics (laughs) csi fanatics where's the cat it's the only reason jake yakovet is here she actually like started like a little earlier and then like took off before we went live. So I'm pretty sure she she'll be back here in a little bit to finish the job. For those of y'all uh, who know what I mean by that. Here's the thing though. Speaking of Jake, at this point, I have no idea which one of us you're talking about on either one of these. I'm completely confused. He always like he typically always refers to me as Adam's number two, which I don't know why. I'm Adam's number one. I'm the uh, the firstborn. So right. Yeah, it's weird. Number one doesn't necessarily mean number one, though. Well, it does according to FCL stats. Uh, Anyways, moving on. (laughs) Whoa, blow. (laughs) By the way, nice uh, nice facial hair you have growing there, sir. (laughs) Liar. I have to compliment you on the the facial fluff that you have on that uh, upper lip. It is doing fantastic. This is absolute trash. (laughs) <laughs> this is just the most garbage of things that have ever been on my face, and I'm upset by it. So if y'all if y'all ever want to know, like what we've heard our entire life is, I seemingly have taken. Uh, I look <laughs> a lot like our father. If y'all saw, uh, we posted on uh, social media for Father's Day the picture of the two of us with our father. Uh, I look like him, and he looks like our mom. So therefore, I have, to grow I have taken on the DNA and the facial hair of my father. He has taken on the DNA and facial hair of our mom. So <laughs> that's why. <laughs> it's true. I'm actually really curious if you do let it like fully grow out. Could I mean it's it's patchy right now, but could it get like bushy? <laughs> God damn, Vernon! <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> Sad excuse, a <of> man face. <laughs> Now, I'll be honest. Here's the thing: like uh, our DNA usually is not very strong on facial hair. I'm I'm surprised I got this, and this has like been a year. I think this actually probably hit like after what eight months of trying to grow it, and it's been like steady. And then I've just maintained it. But this is this is about as much as I'm gonna grow unless I just let it go down, which it's I don't want to let it do. Eight months for it to grow on me. <laughs> facial hair doesn't come around easy. Guys, if y'all have any questions, comments, or you feel sorry about our family's DNA, streamlabs.com <laughs> slash cinefanatics is a great place to show your appreciation for us, regardless of what our facial hair uh, it, woes are. <laughs> so hit up um, hit up Streamlabs. Uh, questions, comments, anything like that. There's a uh, there's a uh, cat. Cat says, hmm, looks humid there. He is referring to this picture that I posted up on Twitter because I just ran by uh, 7-Eleven. You can't see inside the 7-Eleven because the uh, perspiration oh, the on the windows. Yeah. Because it's humid as hell here right now. I assume is hell, hell is very humid. humid. I would it assume just, hell is very dry. It's, well, you know, yeah, just, just 
Okay. <laughs> Rachel <laughs> well, says try try eyebrow liner. <laughs> um, just, that's actually not a bad idea. Just a little like the I like an. Uh, well, I'm thinking the uh, eyelash extender thing, whatever it's called, the brush. You know, I don't extend my eyelashes, so. But a hundred percent sold on keeping the mustache for too long. They just said grow it. They didn't say like once it's grown to hang on to it for weeks on end. This thing looks like terrible. It- I feel like if we planned this out better, this would have been something where we could have had like uh, Travis Fishburne like pop up in here all of a sudden and say like, no, keep it. And then he just pops out and that's all he says. <laughs> you got to keep it until your winning record is more than your losing record. We need the mustache for twirling. There you go. You got to you gotta grow it out till you can at least it, twirl it. That will not happen. It will not get there. See, I can it's, do that with mine. It's about three days away from hitting its peak, guys. I'm going to be honest. I actually could if I do the whole thing. This is really weird to do on camera, by the way. Uh, so while I'm sitting here, like, you look like you're going to tie someone to some railroad tracks. I know. <laughs> 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 There's a screenshot for the night right there. Uh, so while I'm twirling my mustache, uh, guys, patreon.com slash cinefanatics is a great place to, uh, to help support us in all of our endeavors, whether it's uh, trying to grow a YouTube channel or t- trying to tie some damsel in distress to railroad tracks. Uh, <laughs> Patreon.com is a great place to help us out with that. Uh, things we have coming up. Uh, so we did a live watch along of Captain America, the first Avenger last night, which was a lot of fun. Uh, I thought that was really well, really well done on our parts. If I do say so myself, uh, this month, this is really annoying me. <laughs> Uh, this month, uh, for oh, the Patreon watch along, uh huh, for the uh, Patreon watch along, which will be not this coming Thursday, but the following Thursday, uh, we will be doing a uh, watch along of Space Jam, the original Space Jam, uh, because there's a sequel coming out, so it makes sense that we would watch the original for the sequel to come out, just in case. Uh, so that's what we're doing. <laughs> it's the, the, it the ash and mustache. I don't understand that, Garth. Puts, uh, I think it's supposed to be like the ache and mustache. Oh, I'm sorry. Are you trying to explain his joke to me that I clearly already got and decided not to acknowledge fully? Anyways, patreon.com slash cinefanatics for all your cinefanatics needs. Uh, even if you hit the $1, you'll be a part of our Discord and the silliness that could happen over there. Uh, and I think we're going to do, we'll probably have a movie trivia hangout towards the later end of this month. That's at the, uh, $25 Maverick tier. So that's a lot of fun. So yes, please hit up that Patreon. Uh, there's things coming up like trips. Apparently the country's open again. Uh, we need to start saving up for that. So it feels so good to say. I know. Like we're vaccinated, we're doing good, and we're ready to go. And we'll probably still wear a mask on the airplane because that's probably going to be the way it is for the next year. But whatever. Or two. (laughs) I I have a feeling the airplane. In fact, those of y'all, I know there's a couple of people I see in the chat that uh, these guys. uh, (laughs) I was reading Jake's thing. Patreon.com slash these guys. Uh, These guys. These guys in the chat. I know some of these guys in the chat like to. uh, uh, like to uh, travel a lot. So if y'all have already traveled so far, uh, how's the situation on airplanes? I- I'm guessing like you have to keep a mask on the entire time, the entire flight. Like that's that's yeah. gonna be weird and annoying. There's some other really? people I follow who uh, are taking like trips and like vlogging while they're taking trips, and they have to wear the mask on the airplane the entire time. Yeah, uh, I am curious as to where this potentially leads. I'm not. I'm not curious at all. It's sports clips, but <laughs> I am. I mean, if you look at the uh, the comment before it, I'm not curious at all. <laughs> so manscape. Um, so okay. So Roxy traveled to Boston. She didn't wear a mask on her flight. You know what? The people I was actually watching the vlog from were traveling to Hawaii. I bet. So I think it might be like a Hawaii specific thing. Because they're pretty uh, secluded out in the ocean. So they might be one of those like, they're just super guarded over in that state. 
Yeah, see, that's weird though, because then you have uh like New Zealand, which is like supremely armed against like anyone uh, at last I heard anyone coming in and out of that country because they don't want to flare. They've been like almost 100% no, no virus this entire time. Yeah. So I don't, I don't know. Maybe if Malcolm pops up in the chat there, he could tell us exactly how it's been there. But uh, anyways, uh, where are we at on the show notes here? Uh, upcoming shows. Uh, even if you're not a part of our Patreon, tomorrow night we will be continuing our breakdown. Hopefully, a more a little more enjoyable and entertaining this week uh, of episode five of Loki. Uh, here's something I want to point out with this that I thought was it, it's kind of amazing. While I was creating this thumbnail, uh, of course, I haven't seen the episode yet because it hasn't come out yet, and I don't have uh, uh, future prediction powers yet. Uh, but when I create these thumbnails uh, with Loki specifically, I've been creating them ahead of time before the episode <laughs> airs. And whatever image I choose for like that side has always been like what like perfectly corresponds with that episode. Like, I don't know if whether I'm just good at this or if Loki is just that easy to predict what's going to be like the main focus of that particular episode. Say, for example, Rinslayer. Willing to bet is going to be a well, major focus in the next episode. To be fair, if you go based on the uh, plot of what happened in the episode before that, you can usually go, okay, I'm guessing this is probably going to be a thing. Although, I don't know if Renslayer is actually going to be as big on this next episode as some other Loki-oriented things. Anyway. Yeah, possibly, but they didn't release a poster of them, so i just go with Renslayer. <laughs> anyway, we'll... Uh, We'll find out tomorrow, won't we? Because I'm going to watch it tonight before I go to sleep. Yeah, I can't do that. I have to be at work early in the morning, so I have to watch it on my lunch break. Dang, sucks to be you, man. I know. I hate that because usually by then I'm like, oh, I'm so tired. It's just so awful that you have money. (laughs) The character I picked for the thumbnail was in the episode. You know what, Garth? You're you're a good person. Um... (laughs) Uh, I'm guessing this is in regards to New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Anyways. uh, I hope we don't have to take a COVID test before we get on an airplane later this year because I'm vaccinated. I don't want to stick anything up my nose anymore. That's what I'm wondering. Like, are you able just to show the card? Because I remember hearing like news reports of, uh, oh, I can't remember where it was, but there was some like bar that was like if you pay like them you pay a bartender or whatever 20 bucks they'll make a fake covid card for you i was like really why yeah um okay so vernon was talking about hawaii because we're running a show vernon we have to quickly get through all this i can't i can't post everybody's comment but i do try to quickly scan and read them all yeah. Uh, anyways, so how's your week been? I haven't talked to you in a week since uh, tagline last week. How how have you been? Yeah, you have you have not shared words with me in a whole entire week. Um, wasn't it last week that I competed in the FCL? It was because that was the stipulation with the stash. Um, wait, that's a week old mustache right there. <laughs> get off my back I can't, I can't help it oh I'm sorry let me climb up off that thing <laughs> um, yes it is unfortunately <laughs> but that's it it looks like butt <laughs> I beg to differ butts are hairier than that <laughs> well sometimes um, <laughs> I'm not going there uh, anyways, let's 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 keep past this topic, I guess. Uh, other than your uh, your lack of facial hair, how else have you been doing? I'm doing okay. I'm doing alright. Doing thing, things are okay. Things that are, uh, things, things that are second okay. vaccine really hadn't hit you that hard. Yeah, it didn't affect me barely at all. Honestly, I like had maybe a slight fever for a little bit, and like the morning after. 
I was like feeling like I uh, maybe drank a little bit too much the night before. I mean, that's that's how the morning after goes, yo. Yeah, it it really it was more so of a uh, kind of a hangover feeling rather than a I took a vaccine and I'm supposed to be feeling like death kind of feeling. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it was actually not bad. Very uh, very reasonable, manageable. How was your uh, July Fourth? July Fourth was great. We you would know you were there. <laughs> oh, also yes, you would know you were there. I know. Uh, we went downtown to watch the fireworks, which is something like we haven't really done that. Like, when was the last time you actually went downtown? I know, like in the Austin, Austin, Texas area, there's various places you could go to see fireworks. When was the last time you actually went to the downtown proper one? Um, to the down to the who? When's the last time I went to fireworks downtown? Yeah. It's been a long one week time. since you looked at me. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> now, we, full circle. We got there. <laughs> we got there. Um, no, it's uh, it's been since. Uh, gosh, when when was it? It might have been like a full decade. Honestly, it might have been yeah. about ten years since I've. What was ten years ago? Twenty eleven. Oh God! Why did you have to do that? Why? Shoot. It might even be before. It might be like 20. God. Uh, you know what? It might be like 2009. It's probably the last time I went downtown for fireworks. So it's been a while. All these reminders of how much time has passed. I'd call you a bastard, but I know who your father is. So um. <laughs> that seems <laughs> unnecessary. <laughs> um, yeah, it's. I feel like it's probably been even longer than that for me since I've seen the fireworks downtown we've always gone to like either like some like little park that's uh like outside of downtown just because we don't want to deal with the crowds downtown uh which speaking of which that wasn't that bad this year uh but i've uh, like we kind of we kind of like ducked out of there went to go grab like some food or whatever and really didn't have to deal with the massive amount of traffic trying to just get out of uh downtown austin which is yeah. if you ever hear the horror stories of uh, the traffic in Austin, Texas, that's where it's at. It's pretty much exclusively downtown and then a few other like highways here and there. But that's Rush not hour. what you clicked on this video for. So let's stop talking about Austin traffic. Um, my week was pretty good. We got a three day weekend. I didn't ask. Work. Oh, well, thank you for not asking. Uh, I got a three-day weekend at work, kind of relaxed, and I'm going to use this to kind of segue into this next segment. What movies have you watched and caught up on over this past week? Yes. I really need a graphic. (laughs) I will use this time to actually highlight one new movie that I wanted to actually talk about because I didn't really watch any other new movies other than this one. Um, And I don't feel like doing a full-on, like, Review, review of it since you haven't watched it yet either. So I'll just briefly talk about it. Uh, I watched the Tomorrow War, and in the chat, you guys will find that Garth McMurray will probably drop the fact that he hated the movie. Perfectly fine. <laughs> uh, you guys get to uh, get both sides of this because I actually really liked it. Uh, I thought it was I thought it was actually a very fascinating, if not very plot holeish. But still fascinating and fun uh, sci-fi adventure. Yep, there it is. Garth gave it one star on Letterbox. I gave it four because I actually enjoyed myself. And there, they did some uh, really interesting, like personal stuff uh, with the characters in the movie that I thought was like really fascinating. They did they did some things that I wasn't actually expecting them to do that I didn't see coming based on watching the trailer. So it kind of that's what kind of like really actually helped me really enjoy it. Really. Um, it was, it was good. I thought it was really good. Uh, enjoyed Chris Pratt. I enjoyed, uh, I know not, not too many people say that too often anymore, but still I enjoyed Chris Pratt and I enjoyed, uh, Yvonne Shahovsky. She, uh, she was actually really good in it. Who? No. I'm not saying her name again. <laughs> I thought no. you would. I thought you would say it again, and then I would just like keep going with like trying to get you to keep over and over nope. and over again. Nope, I'm not that gullible. Um, 
Here, here's the thing. This is why I want to watch the Tomorrow War. Like I have, I have, I still have no idea. I know it has Chris Pratt and aliens. That's it. I don't know anything else about this movie. But the reason I want to watch this is because there's a pitch meeting for it, and <laughs> I love watching pitch meetings. So I therefore must watch the movie before I watch the pitch meeting. The the pitch meeting was actually really funny too. Um, it always is. So yeah, it's. It's, it's a hard sell, but uh, yeah, no, I actually not I had, hard I had a good time with it. It's not but, a hard sell. It's usually super easy and barely an inconvenience to sell that, but just saying. Wow, 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 wow. Um, anyway, I had a really References good time. References to pitch meeting are tight. Did you get off pitch meetings back? Jeez. Oh, um, let me climb up off that thing then. Yeah. So the CGI in the movie, really good, actually. Uh, it was pretty flawless. There was like a lot of really cool action sequences. Mm-hmm. Um, and there just the some character dynamics between certain characters were, were just really great. There were some moments in there that were definitely corny. Like some of the dialogue was a little like off in places like, okay, you're not like really talking this way in this moment. This is a kind of a high intensity moment and you're, you're probably going to be pretty laser focused and freaking out, not uh, not cracking quips and stuff at each other. But other than that, you know, it's it was it was it was good. It was good. It was a lot of fun. The plot, the plot, the plot has a lot of holes in it, and it requires a lot of suspension of disbelief because they do their best to explain how and why the time traveling functions and works the way it does in this movie. Um, but was, if was you this, st- if you stare at it for too long, you'll see you'll start seeing through it. Was this like a like a one of those like Christian faith based movies? No. Cuz it's very holy. Very holy. Oh god. All right guys, I'm doing the show the rest of the night. You get a close up on the mustache. That's that's what happens. Um, so no one needs to be that close to that facial hair. Let's just, well, say, then let's just... save them, save them by not making stupid ass jokes like that again. <laughs> I, I offer no guarantees. <laughs> I make no promises and offer no guarantees. Then seriously, um, <laughs> well, they do get raptured up until okay. <laughs> spoiler alert: This is a fair there is point. a ra- there is a rapture in this movie. It's uh, not a spoiler. It's not a spoiler. <laughs> Does uh oh what's his face? Uh oh man, what's his name? That's uh, it. Candid Cand- 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 got Cand- it. Cinefam. Cinefam. I actually like that. Yeah. AJ nailed it. We finally Cinefam. figured it out. For those of you who might not understand why we're making a big deal of this, I feel like for like the past year, we've been trying to figure out exactly like what to call fans of the of yeah, all of you people. What what do you mean, you people? <laughs> you mean you people. <laughs> uh we've been trying to figure out what to call fans of the Cine Fanatics, where it's like the Cine Fanatic Fanatics, or like it, nothing really feels like it, it could stick. Because otherwise like you Cine- call them like Cine fans, you call everybody else Cine Fanatics. Well, it's like okay, well, you just that means you just love movies. That doesn't mean like it's not relatable to us specifically. Cine yeah. Fan. I like Cinefam. You nailed it, AJ. Congratulations. You win a virtual Marvel, high five. You, you won the Marvel comic books uh, sacred no prize because I uh, don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Know. All right. All right, AJ. Uh, don't make this me take it so back. much better than the Tomorrow War. <laughs> I'm eager to watch this movie. It really, this movie really is a movie that kind of like splits people. Like you, either you're really going to like it or you're really going to hate it. It is what it is. No, because if we're a true family and like uh, we're the, I guess, like patriarchs of this family, we're not drinking Corona. Okay. I do enjoy the Bud Light Lime Arita, though. This stuff is pretty good. Not sponsored, but I mean, I do enjoy it and it tastes like butt. Anyways, um... tastes like my mustache. <laughs> That was a weird thing to say after I said it tastes like butt. <laughs> I know. My mustache is butt. <laughs> oh, God. Recognize that taste right away, didn't you? Um... <laughs> God. 
<laughs> Tastes like what? My turn. <laughs> We're done. <laughs> anyways. There we go. <laughs> uh anyways for movies that i've watched uh, again if y'all seen anything new that you want to talk about uh drop that in the chat real quick so we can talk about those uh so for this past week i watched uh Bat batman the long halloween part one uh if you're fans of comic books this is one of those uh dc animated movies if you're a fan of the comic uh, the Long Halloween is a very uh, is a very sacred like Batman story. It's up there with like the Killing Joke. It's one of the best like Batman graphic novel stories ever ever done. Yeah. Um, I don't think this. Uh, they they split the movie the two or the the comic into two parts, and because of that, I don't think this quite hits where it needs to hit. It's very slow. Uh, it's kind of slightly obvious if you're not familiar with the storyline at all. Uh, it's kind of obvious where the uh, the twist is, where it's going to be coming, which isn't going to be until part two, but you can kind of already tell from part one. Uh, like, I guess it, I mean, it's pretty faithful to the storyline of the Long Halloween, unlike the Killing Joke that added this whole like. 30 45 minute story of Batgirl and yeah that was just terrible. Uh this one seems to be fairly faithful to it but yeah. it's just a lot longer and drawn out than I think it needs to be. This really doesn't need to be two separate movies. But anyways, uh so that one I wasn't a huge fan of. Uh the other one I caught up on for the first time uh was Diary of a Mad Black Woman. That's a Medea movie. Yeah, it's the first Medea movie, and all these Medea movies are based off of, uh, well, for the most part, they're based off of plays that Tyler Perry had written a long time ago. Uh, this was the first one, and I know like a lot of people always like had like good things to say about this. I found this movie a little odd in that there's like a solid story. There's like a solid romance story of it. And then there's Medea, <laughs> where you've got like the solid, serious story, and then she comes in and it turns into slapstick for like a minute or two. <laughs> and it's it's really weird how it bounces off. Like in one scene, you've got like this heartfelt, like passionate uh, situation going on with uh, with the lead actress in this movie and her story, and then something like heartbreaking happens. And then the very next scene, she's sitting at the kitchen table hearing advice from Medea, which her advice usually is, let me take the gun out of my clutch and wave it around a bit. Like it's, it, it's a really weird situation. Like the, this movie doesn't quite know what exactly, <laughs> what type of movie it wants to be. Uh, but I see why there's a lot of love for it. It was enjoyable. Uh, it's not going to be like anywhere high ranking, but it was an enjoyable movie. I liked, I, I, I was able to watch it and separate those parts in my head. Like, okay, serious story time. And now it's time to be a little silly. It, it, it was kind of weird. Like I had no idea that that's what this movie was going to be like going into it. And right. like, I just had to learn to adjust to watching it on the fly. But uh, I, I'm curious. There's a couple other uh, Tyler Perry Medea movies I might check out, but uh, from what I understand, they're a lot very similar to the serious story with a little humor from Medea. But yeah, that's the only one I caught up with on this past week. So there you go. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Who does Batman boink in this one? Catwoman. No one. Heroes well, don't do that. No, he boinks. He doesn't do anything else but boink. Like, no foreplay <laughs> at all. <laughs> Anyways. I was, I was trying to think of a, a word I wanted to use to explain that act, but I can't say that. My mind's not thinking of anyone that's uh, it's going to be nice and family-friendly sounding. <laughs> yeah, Anyways. Uh, let's see. Vernon is saying, please check out Family That Prays and Witness Protection. Uh, and like Family Reunion is straight drama with comic elements, and it's great. Cool. Oh, there you go. Uh, I think Family Reunion is actually the next one in the series. So, 
Um, I'm just eager to hurry up and get to that Boo 2. Because Boo 2 and Medea Halloween, I know that's that's Oscar winning material right there. So eager to get to that. <laughs> How hot uh, does Tyler Perry get when he's put on the Medea costume and outfit and then puts on another costume on top of that because Medea has to wear a costume? Yeah, because there's like the bodysuit and... Then he puts on like the the dress that Medea wears. Yeah, it that's got to be pretty hot. Yeah. Uh, what I like about it, uh, since the topic of tonight seems to be facial hair, what I like about it is uh, either he, either he puts on a lot of makeup or he shaves all of his face. Because if you've ever seen Tyler Perry, he's usually always rocking that very serious like five o'clock shadow type of facial scruff um yeah but then medea of course has no facial hair perfectly clean but i mean like tyler perry plays multiple people in these movies so it's just kind of funny like essentially he films the entire movie and then shaves and immediately films all the medea scenes yeah like that that's dedication to your story to your characters and that's awesome yep Anyways, anyway. uh, I didn't realize that tonight would be so Medea heavy, but let's move on. <laughs> uh, let's do let's some get box this. office numbers. Yeah, let's get some movie news. Box office numbers. How are the box office looking? Uh, how's uh, F9 ranking? F9 has dropped down a little bit. Um, about, I believe, about 67%. So it's had a pretty solid drop off, but it made this last weekend, and we're not counting the fact that it's a technically a three day weekend with uh, Monday being independence day observed here in the U S yeah. <clears throat> um, so counting just a regular weekend, <laughs> what's in the box office. Uh, we're looking at about a $23 million gross for F nine, the fast saga in for this weekend, still sitting at number one, which is great because that means that, Three other movies that opened this weekend uh, did not hit number one. That would be The Boss Baby, Family Business, which I believe is also over on Peacock. You can watch that on Peacock as well. So that's got a day and date over on over on that there Peacock uh, streaming service. So there's that. And then you've, of course, got The Forever Purge, uh, which I was doing the... Uh, country accent a little prematurely there it's uh the forever purge uh apparently is also a movie that came out and uh boss baby did about 16 million forever purge did about 12 and a half so those movies aren't doing so hot right now but i think that unless you're like a highly anticipated big blockbuster movie fresh off the end of the pandemic you're not going to be doing so so hot in the theaters right now Mm. Um, and then the other one, the third one that came out is Zola, which made about a million bucks in the box office, give or take. And nobody knows what it is. Yeah. So it's an A24 movie. Apparently it's a movie based off of a Twitter thread. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know the details beyond that. I watched the trailer once and went, I have no idea what's happening here. And if you ask me, it sounds like A24 becoming a parody of itself. <laughs> because uh, that's this is the, one, movie. Yeah, the Twitter thread. Yeah. It's the kind of movie a 24 would make is a movie based off a Twitter thread. So uh, I got, I got no details on that movie other than it is a a 24 movie that released this weekend. So it's not going to do so fantastic in terms of box office revenue. It's just going to make independent movie kind of money mm-hmm. is what it is. That's what happens. Other than that, you know, not too much has changed. Uh, in the Heights is still in the low, unfortunately, due to not having like this big opening as it should have. Um, Hitman's Wife's Bodyguard's a movie that's still out that we haven't seen. That's okay. I'll I'll wait. <laughs> uh, and then Cruella and A Quiet Place Two are still holding on in the box office, so that's pretty good. I don't feel like mentioning any of these other movies because who cares. Yeah, uh, this next week we will be looking at uh, Black Widow coming out. So uh, I expect some shakeup in the box office. I believe the last I read that uh, 
people are predicting that Black Widow is going to open higher than F9 did. Also keep in mind that Black Widow is going to be available at the uh, Disney Plus premiere access as well. So uh, that might that might cause a small mm, hindrance to what it can make in the box office. Yeah. Uh, I, I know that they're also pushing a lot for the this movie was made to be seen in a theater. All movies that were originally going to be in a theater were made to be seen in a theater. So. I, I do think that you're going to see a big uh, big box office for Black Widow, dis- even even with it being on Disney Plus. I think there's just there's just going to be a big push to just want to see that in the theater. It's a Marvel movie. Yeah. That's these things. You know, most people are going to want to see it in the theater. Uh, so we do have tickets to go see it. We will be getting that review up. I'm hoping to have that review up probably Friday, sometime, probably later Friday night, maybe. Yeah. So uh, be on the lookout for that. Uh, again, if you're following at Cinefanatics MLP on Twitter and Instagram, you will be notified or you will at least see when that goes live. Subscribe to us. Hit that bell. That will notify you, hopefully, yep. uh, that that's gone up. Uh, in the meantime, while you were talking about box office, uh, we had a talented individual that decided that uh, your FCL uh, announcement image needed an update. So therefore, it has been updated to... Chrissy Adams with the mustache now. And I feel like y- you look extremely dapper in this. And this is definitely the look that you need to be going for uh, henceforth. So uh, thank you, uh, the individual that gave us this image. You are doing the Lord's work without a doubt. <laughs> <So excited. laughs> I'm so mad right now. <laughs> You're doing the Lord's work right there. Oh, uh, no, no, that's not the Lord's work. <laughs> that's the Dark Lord's work. <laughs> dark Lord. <laughs> uh, anyways, uh, again, uh, those of y'all watching, questions, comments, anything. <laughs> again, if you feel sorry for his facial hair, streamlabs.com slash send the fanatics. Uh, that'd be great to help this channel out. Send in some stream labs so I can get some mustache oil and maybe see if maybe a thing of miracle grow. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see plant, plant food. I don't know if y'all send in enough donations on that. I'll let him borrow my beard oil. <laughs> I'm not growing a beard. Use that. Well, you could use it on your mustache. It's, it's facial hair oil. It goes like the facial hair. Anyways, <clears throat> Uh, moving on, since we started talking about uh, Marvel with Black Widow coming out, uh, we did, over this past week, get a glimpse of some merchandise for Spider-Man No Way Home. What I Say like about me. this... Say it with me. Merchandising! Yeah. <laughs> uh, what I like about this is... Uh, I, I, again, I think I saw someone on social media do this, is... We've all been sitting here chomping at the bit, hoping for the first trailer. So we know maybe kind of sort of what the hell this movie is doing. And we haven't got the trailer yet. So the good fine folks over at uh, Funko and Hasbro were like, screw it. We're going to release the images of the toys. You don't want to release the trailer. Here's your first glimpse at anything coming from this movie. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lancaster. Your dedication to this channel and your uh, ideas have been taken and they will probably be used. Thank you, member of the Cinefam. Uh, anyways, uh, so we're not going to post like all the photos because I feel like there's uh, maybe some s- slight spoilers on one of them. Uh, but I do like the images that we got here of a couple of, like I guess, newish Spider-Man costumes. I know the one on the right is pretty much the iron spider from in game and far from home. I do like that. We're getting this like ball J Jonah Jameson, JK Simmons figure, uh, which the last time we had that, there was a J Jonah Jameson figure from uh, the original Spider-Man movie, the Sam Raimi Spider-Man movie. So this was a newer updated version of JK Simmons and I think this is like the really the only time he's ever had an action figure is when he plays Jameson. <laughs> it's true. Uh, 
and then of course there was also this uh this black and gold costume here on the left not exactly sure what this has to do with anything maybe he's like in stealth mode trying to hide from everyone who's hunting him after he uh killed mysterio uh i doubt it like whenever you see spider-man in a black costume though everyone's always quick to jump on it's the symbiote i don't believe this is the symbiote uh there's nothing about that costume that makes me think of the black symbiote costume yeah. thing especially because this is still within Sony's control. And I don't think Sony wants to confuse the public with Venom and the symbiote over there in that movie. I don't think they're, I, I feel like they're going to stay very far away from the Spider-Man gets the black symbiote storyline altogether. So it's the return yeah. of night monkey. It might be, it might be some kind of like updated version of night monkey. And they're going to be like, Hey, Night Monkey looks like Spider-Man. Night Monkey's <laughs> Peter Parker. We're all dumb. <laughs> like, <laughs> that might be where they go with this. Yeah. Uh, the Funko toys, uh, there was like a little, couple of twists on the Spider-Man costume. One that I feel like was maybe gives a little, a little away as far as what he might be doing or i don't know yeah. i can't even word it without it sounding like it's giving something away yeah, there's so. some there's some stuff with the funko toys we're not going to highlight those just because of their how they are uh, related to potential plot storylines and stuff so if you're that uh, curious google exists um i will mention that there's also the lego ones and i don't have the pictures of these but a lot of the lego toys seem to be setting up uh, as they usually do like set pieces that you could build and then they come with like the little figures oh, uh you mean like Boba Fett ship yeah well except they changed <laughs> the name whatever uh so on a couple of these lego sets we did get like we see they come with like little lego figures of mysterio and vulture uh which both of whom we actually know are still going to be within the mcu within the spider-man stories so it's not really much of a spoiler uh but that does give us hope that we will see both mysterio and vulture in this next movie and of course uh thanks to alfred molina <laughs> we also know that dr octopus is probably going to be in it as well as the actual announcement of jamie fox being back as electro so Molina, the one true president of Marvel Studios. <laughs> yeah, that whole thing. That was that was hilarious. Uh, what was that? That interview with uh, Kevin Feige. And she's like, so what do you think of Alfred Molina? Yeah. He's a great guy. He likes to talk a lot more than me. <laughs> and it was just so funny. Um, but yeah, it's so interesting. the toys look cool. Uh, there's definitely, they definitely are hiding something. There's still more of these toys that I feel like they could release. Yeah. Uh, say like if the rumor of Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire also being in this movie, I would fully expect for there to be Funko Pops of their versions of Spider-Man again within the realm of the no way home movie. So if that happens, I would fully expect that. I would yeah. also expect Funko pops of this updated Dr. Octopus, this updated electro, but those are probably the ones that Marvel and Sony are very strictly saying, you better not release those pictures, whatever you do. Don't release the picture, you know, like they released the image of giant man before civil war came out. Good job, Funko. Nice. Uh, anyway, so yeah, that was that merchandise that was released over the past week. Um, so you talked about Tomorrow War. Um, let's get into the main the main topic. Yep, for tonight, uh, folks. Yesterday, uh, and I, I know every once in a while we like to highlight, um when someone meaningful in the movie industry has passed away. Um, I mean, you, you have to, if you have a love of movies, you have to be bringing up uh, people who have had a huge hand in it, especially if it's something that you have a connection to. Mm -hmm. um, Richard Donner passed away, I guess, yesterday. 
or at least it was announced yesterday. He passed away at 91, which I didn't even know he was that old. Like I thought he was still younger. So, Mm-mm. um, he passed away. Yeah, he did pass away yesterday. So, uh, cause of death was not revealed yet, but I mean, he's 91. Could be any number of things, <clears throat> but not the least of which is being 91. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, 91 is usually a good sign there. Yeah. Uh, the the thing I want to highlight is. He's one of those he's one of those directors that I feel like is at least within our lifetime. He's one of those that really has been meaningful to uh, to us and to what we see nowadays. Uh I'll even go so far back as uh Superman the first Superman the movie came out in 1978 mm-hmm. and that was, for all intents and purposes, really the first time someone took a comic book character and seriously made a solid blockbuster type movie out of it. Now, I'm not including like the the Batman, the movie, the 1966 Batman, because I mean that was based off the TV show. But this was like completely hasn't been done yet. It was a comic book character put on the big screen for like the first time. Um, and there was a lot of serious money and ideas behind this. There was some passion to bring this, this particular Superman to life. And it was the reason, like even right out the gate, the, the, the tagline for this movie was you'll believe a man can fly. Absolutely. I know we said that when Christopher Reeve passed away saying, thank you for letting us believe, um, or, or yeah, letting us believe a man could fly. That's why I'm seeing with this one is thank you for showing us that a man can fly. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I that was my first foray into Richard Donner is the first Superman movie. Uh, of course, we'll probably mention some other connections here, but I mean, uh, looking at his catalog, he's known for like the Omen, Superman, uh, the Goonies, Lethal Weapon, like he's uh, Scrooged. He's done a whole lot of really popular, very loved movies. Um, even going so far as it dawned on me, I haven't watched like any of the other Lethal Weapon movies outside of the first one, and I could have sworn I've seen the fourth one at some point. Yeah. Uh, I'm now just sitting down when I get time, and I'm going to plow through all four of them uh, because I need to have seen those already. But uh, your thoughts on, on Richard Donner real quick. The thing about Richard Donner is, and I mean, you even brought it up. We talk about Superman. We talk about Goonies. We talk about uh, we talk about all sorts of things here. And he he has shaped like the childhood of a lot of people. I mean, even Garth says, you know, ten years old, and he believed. You know, that was that's a big piece of of Richard Donner's legacy in terms of being a filmmaker is the having nice. made movies that uh, have affected and shaped a lot of uh, people's childhood. He did this. I didn't know he did this. Mm-hmm. The night, nightmare at 20,000 feet with William Shatner and the gremlin yep. on the wing in the twilight zone. Yeah. Yeah. There's something on the wing, something, <laughs> some thing thing on the on wing. The wing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, I mean, it, it is sad. It's, it's obviously sad when you like, you lose somebody who, uh, has, been so influential in terms of uh, how a lot of us grew up, uh, the movies that a lot of us watched, even more so, like I'll even highlight this, we can go in this direction too. It's it's more than just directly the movies that Richard Donner made, but mm-hmm. also the movies that uh, came off of just his influence on other people. A uh, big one of which I'll highlight is uh, Kevin Feige, worked underneath, I believe, as an intern for Richard Donner for a while. Richard Donner, you know, making Superman and, uh, you know, just just that whole, that whole like, bringing a superhero to life and seeing the influence that that had on Kevin Feige. It is, I believe it's a big old fact that we don't get the MCU, the Marvel Universe, as we know it and as we have come to love it, at least in the same way, if at all, if it weren't for Richard Donner's influence 
not only just generally in making a superhero movie, but specifically in how he influenced uh, Kevin Feige. So, yeah. I mean, we're talking about things that, you know, what is his reach in terms of filmmaking, not just movies that came out during the time that some people were alive, but just, you know, nowadays we're talking about people who are growing up now, who are growing up with the MCU, who are growing up with more like, uh, movies that are that that are more recent you know his reach is still far beyond into even those movies that's what's really cool the one i like to point out in regards to specifically his connection with the superhero movies of course like i was saying he did superman the movie which was again like the first major let's take a superhero from a comic book seriously put him on the big screen and it was a critical and financial success it, like it, it was the uh, like the upper echelon of best all-time comic book movies ever made for a long time and i in my opinion it still sits up there it's still if i had to look at all the comic book movies made so far it easily would probably still sit in the top five ever yeah ever made um just because you wouldn't there's so many of them you would not have had it not been for that one now what i like about this and his connection is you look back at like this modern renaissance of comic book movies we have uh, i know a lot of people uh are always quick to say that it was the 2000s x-men movie that's what really brought on this comic this comic book movie renaissance i kind of want to argue a little bit for blade uh, but a lot of people didn't know that was a comic book when that came out. X-Men uh, was more of a popular property. X-Men was the one that was already known, uh, thanks mainly to the X-Men animated series throughout the 90s on Fox. Uh, yep. But yeah, when the when the movie came out, uh, of course, they needed someone to produce it. So, of course, you got uh, Richard Donner as your executive producer and his wife, Lauren Schuler Donner, uh, as the producer of that movie. So not only has he influenced comic book movies way back with 78's Superman, he also helped usher in what most people believe, arguably so, the modern renaissance of comic book movies with the successful X-Men movie in 2000. So I like that just for his connection to the superhero properties. There's no way at all you get the MCU as it is right now, not only with his involvement with comic book movies before, but then like you were mentioning with uh, the influence he had on Kevin Feige, there's no way the MCU exists without right. Richard Donner to begin with. Uh, I also like to credit that uh, there's also a chance that the justice league uh, Zack Snyder cut would not exist. Had we not gotten the Richard Donner cut of Superman two first that was the first time i really believe that they went back years after a movie came out and said ah let's go back and show what the original version was supposed to look like uh so i, I thought the richard donner cut of that was actually pretty good but the problem with that is i was i was so used to richard lester's version of it that's kind of hard to break away but i thought you were about, about to say that that was the first time you really believed that a man could fly according to the original director's vision <laughs> vision yeah uh but, I mean, let's get off the superhero movies for a minute. Uh, I know a lot of people, especially, like, around, like, the late 20s, 30s, almost into the 40s, that will say that they grew up with the Goonies, and that's one of their favorite movies from their childhood. Goonies was super influential. Uh, I remember watching as a kid, and I was scared to death of Sloth turning around when the first time you saw his face, I was like, oh, that guy's hideous. And they're like, you shouldn't do that, Robert. Even people with that kind of a face need love. <laughs> Where did this just go? I was trying to like make a personal connection to it. Like Sloth scared the crap out of me when I was a kid. You have a personal connection to Sloth. Got it. But I mean, even even Goonies I've seen multiple times. And it is, it's a it's one of the most perfect like child adventure movies ever made. Like there's, there's few other movies I would say that are comparable to it. Yeah. That's the thing about when you're talking about Richard Donner's filmography is that he has, he's just done stuff. He's dipped his toes in like literally every single genre. He, had, he was not satisfied with just staying on one particular 
uh, style of movie. He wanted to do it all. I mean, you talk about uh, Goonies, the family adventure in the eighties. You talk about, you know, superhero stuff. You're talking about uh, buddy cop. When you bring up um, lethal weapon, you know, when you bring up lethal weapon uh, and seeing like how many movies came from lethal weapon and then like a TV show and all that. And, you know, all sorts of different uh, movies and, and, and whatnot. And, like, Omen in the, in the horror genre. So, mm -hmm. Uh, Scrooge for <laughs> Scrooge for a a weird off the wall take of uh, the Christmas Carol story holiday comedy yeah yeah uh, I mean there's a couple of others I feel like are standouts uh, Maverick mm -hmm. Maverick w with uh, uh, what's his face Mel Gibson <laughs> with Mel Gibson Jodie Foster James Garner uh, that yeah. was actually that was one of those movies I feel like was underrated but was done very well. Uh, especially if you were a fan of the original TV show, uh, Assassins. Assassins was a fun movie, uh, but <laughs> uh, and then there was Conspiracy Theory. I know a lot of people like that. I had a hard time with Conspiracy Theory, but I like, uh, like I understand the love of that movie yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, and then Garth in the chat is uh, saying timeline. Based off of Michael Crichton book, of course, Michael Crichton responsible for Jurassic Park, uh, Sphere, Congo, uh, was it Westworld? I believe he had a hand in Westworld as well. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so I'm, um, I mean, Richard Donner's he, he's one of those directors that you can't, you can't quite pin down exactly what his genre is. Like, there's a yeah. lot of directors you name a movie and you'd be like, oh, yeah, that's so and so. You name a horror movie, there's a very small, limited amount of like steady directors that stayed within uh, the horror genre that you could probably name. Uh, Richard Donner didn't do that. He jumped everywhere, and he proved himself in every single genre. There's not one single genre I would say that he was better at than the other. He's I mean, just an all-around just great filmmaker. Yeah, The Omen is classic. It's one of those classic horror movies. And it's been and like remade and just all sorts well, of let's, stuff. Over. Let's not talk about the remake so much. That's, <laughs> well, okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't care about but, horror movies, honestly. Yeah, I know. Uh, but like he really, like for example, The Omen, he really hasn't dived too much into horror since. Uh, there was, uh, I'm going to bring up this. There's also the movies that he, uh, he didn't direct, but he was executive producer of. So like Omen 3, uh, Lost Boys, Free Willy 1 and 2. Uh, he did executive produce the two uh, Tales from the Crypt movies, uh, Free Willy 3, Any Given Sunday, and uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine. Um, I mean, so again, yeah, he he's had his hands in a lot of places. Uh, he's definitely one of those directors that has earned the legend status that he has. Uh, not only in his vision and his eye, but I mean, if you go back and uh, you you hear the the stories behind him making Superman and Superman Two, uh, he was also a person that was really good at knowing what his vision was, what he wanted, and he would fight for for that vision. Um, there, uh, there's a huge, huge backstory to Superman one and two, uh, primarily Superman two. Uh, I would urge y'all if you haven't seen it, go check out uh, Dan Merle's. Uh, I can't remember if it's on his channel or if it's on the Schmodown channel, the All My Movies, where he's talking about Superman one and Superman two. That one's probably gonna. I mean, they're all gonna end up on his channel, so he's probably got it like on a playlist on his channel now. If it originated on the Schmodown channel, it's gonna be on his channel where you'll find it. Yeah, go go check out Dan Merle talking about Superman too, because he he does a very good job of explaining exactly what was happening behind the scenes between Richard Donner and the Salkinds for yeah for the Superman movie. Uh, I, I don't think I could explain it any better than he did. I don't even think I could explain it like a fourth <laughs> as well as how he did in those. So uh, it's very interesting to watch. Uh, if you're a Schmodown fan, of course, you know, Dan Merle, you know, he knows what he's talking about. So go check yeah. those out. Definitely. Uh, but yeah, major influence uh, on the, the modern movie making as a whole. Uh, mm -hmm. One of our one of our favorite directors, just for that influence and for what he put 
on celluloid way back when. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, it, it, this is going to be sad because this is something we have to face as we ourselves are getting older. We're seeing these legends of movie making that we've we've admired, that we've we've wanted to like connect with in some way, whether it's just watching all of the movies over and over and over again, or the hopes that maybe possibly one day you actually get to meet this legend of a movie maker and say, you and your movie were everything in my childhood. Yeah. So uh, unfortunately it's, it happens, but yeah, uh, I, I will miss seeing what Richard Donner could possibely continue to do. I, th- I think his movies are fantastic the ones that I've seen and the ones yeah. I'm probably about to watch still. Uh, and then, so, and then obviously yeah. like we, uh, you know, thoughts and prayers go out to his family and everybody in the, in the Donner, the Donner family. Um, just cause they, they obviously lost a close loved one to, to them. You know, we mm-hmm. admire his work. We admire the filmography and everything that he produced during his time here on earth and, and all that. But, you know, they they knew him as a loving, you know, father, grandfather, you know, son, brother, husband, sister, not sister. What the heck? Um, wow, <laughs> that's random. Husband, uh, husband. Yeah, <clears throat> that's what I meant. You know, get those two things confused all the time. Yes, yeah, sister um, and husband confused all the time. Anyway, the point is, the point is, is uh, you know, we ad- we admire his work. They obviously admired him as a close family as close family and friend. So, um, you know, thoughts go out, you know, he was 91. So it is, it is sad. It is sad when you, when you have to talk about somebody who has passed away because you're, you're remembering their life and the, the mark they left. But at the same time, when you hit, like when you hit your nineties, you've lived a full life and man, has he lived a full life and has produced a lot of work and influenced a lot of people. So, we uh, we celebrate his life. We celebrate Richard Donner's life uh, here on this channel tonight. So that's why we wanted to take the time. Usually, you know, someone passes away, they might be, you know, I hate saying it this way. They might end up just as a news story that we'll we'll talk about as we move along to whatever the next news story is. But every now and then, there's somebody who has been such a major influence on the film industry that you just can't help but say like, you, we got to spend we got to spend the majority of the time talking about that individual. So Mm -hmm. Richard Donner was, was one of those individuals. So it's, it's very nice. It's, it's it's very nice to be able to look back and go, man, he, uh, he really left a mark. Yeah. Nice to think that we have a body of his work to remember him. Yeah. It's very true. So we, uh, we appreciate him. We appreciate the work that he left behind and the influence that he left behind and uh, just thoughts and prayers towards his family. Yeah. So uh, again, <laughs> very much love what he's the legacy he's left behind. Uh, we will continue to enjoy his works, uh, and may Richard Donner rest in peace. So, yep. Anyways, that's gonna do it for tonight, I believe. Um, exactly. So, uh, yeah. If y'all have any other questions, comments, anything else y'all want to get in, uh, drop those in real quick. Let's quickly go through like our plugs of what we've got coming up. Uh, first and foremost, tomorrow night again, episode five breakdown of Loki. Uh, this has been a very enjoyable series so far. It's been weird. I have no idea where this this episode's going to go, and I absolutely hate hate the fact that hey. I have to wait until my lunch break tomorrow to see it and I you're going to watch lunch you're going to watch yeah you're going to watch it the second it comes out you I'm going to watch it before I go to bed <laughs> you and Kelsey both uh, of course uh Miss Kelsey Kirkland from the Call to Action podcast channel she joins us for this because well <laughs> she's married to Loki let's just be honest <laughs> i mean at least mentally Spoiler alert, <laughs> she's Loki's wife. Uh, so she joins us for that. She's been lovely uh, to have on our breakdowns with it uh, just because uh, I, I like the, the the perspective that she gives on Tom Hiddleston and Loki. Uh, but that it's will be different than the perspective that we would give on Tom Hiddleston. <laughs> hey, Loki's cool. I like Loki. Thumbs up, Lokes. Oh my Whatever. gosh, that was awful. Yeah, well, see, well, that's why cool. we have her on. Eh. 
Yeah, yeah, that's why that's why she's a part of the breakdown. Otherwise, it would be like a whole hour of us talking about an episode like that. And no one wants to watch that. I don't want to watch that, much less be the one saying it. Jeez. Uh, so that's gonna be tomorrow night, uh, nine central, seven Pacific, ten Eastern, as always. Uh, what else do we have? We've got the Patreon, the Space Jam watch along is going to be on the 15th. That's not this Thursday, that's the following Thursday. If you're at the due tier, which is five dollars on patreon.com slash cinefanatics, uh, you'll be able to join us for that. Hopefully, you joined us for the Captain America or at least went back and watched the Captain America First Avenger watch along we did last night. That one is available to the public for free. So you can still watch that if you're in the mood to be patriotic or celebrate Black Widow coming out this week. Speaking of Black Widow, uh, that is coming out this week. We will have the review for that up. Um, I'm going to shoot and aim for Friday to get that up. So uh, it'll be a non-spoiler review if you want to get our thoughts, feelings, and opinions about Black Widow since it's been well over a year since we've gotten a Marvel movie. Uh, we are <laughs> eager to watch and talk about this one. So uh, that'll be up uh, by this weekend at least. So check that out when that drops. Make sure you subscribe to Cinefanatics. Hit that bell so you'll know when it goes up. Or follow us on Twitter at Cinefanatics MLP so you'll see it pop up in the Twitter feed as well. Uh, let's see. As far as Patreon, if you hop on the Patreon, even at the dollar, you'll have access to the Discord. Uh, at the Maverick tier, you could join us for movie trivia study sessions, which are a lot of fun, just kind of like a hangout, and we answer movie trivia questions. In the goal of studying for the First Class League, uh, which is the developmental league of the movie trivia Schmodown. If you're not familiar with the Schmodown, go Google Schmodown and open yourself up to a world of entertainment because movie trivia is a lot of fun. It's the best part of bar trivia, and they don't ask movie trivia questions enough. I got to get the stupid question of, like, what's the tallest mountain in Brazil? I don't care. Was it in a movie? No, <laughs> I don't know it. I feel like I've told this joke before, but... uh, Yeah, yeah the other night. Yeah, we tried to prep these two for FC. Try is doing a lot of heavy lifting in that sentence there, Vernon. We both got one win. <laughs> We've also both got one loss. Wow. <laughs> well, you know, you, you need to know where you fall and stumble so you know how to pick yourself back up, Batman. Here's the thing. You can tell out of the two of us which one of us is typically more optimistic. I look at our wins, and I feel good about our wins. I look at the losses, and I know where I need to work on it so I become a winner. No, I do too. But I also look at do the wins. Do you, though? I also do look you, at the though? Wins. I like to focus on the wins. So how much longer are you keeping that mustache? Yeah. A winner would keep it for at least another two, three weeks. A winner would actually grow a real mustache. <laughs> There's that. No, you too. killed my optimism. You killed my optimism. Are you happy now? You Yes, I am. I'm gonna celebrate by having a beer once this is done. <laughs> Yay! Beer. I like beer. It's good. Anyways. <laughs> Uh, so hop on the Patreon, join the Discord, join us for the Space Jam Watch Along uh, next Thursday, not this coming Thursday. Make sure you follow us at Cinefanatics MLP on Twitter and Instagram. Of course, you can follow us both at, say, Robert Adams MLP Twitter, Instagram, Chris Adams MLP Twitter, Instagram. Both of those. Keep it up until I'm impressed. Yeah, I know. I, I had that in my head too. I'm waiting to be impressed. Uh, to be impressed. So <laughs> now hiring FCL trivia stuff. <laughs> be careful. <Right. laughs> we do have our friend Google, but I mean, Google just doesn't personally know us or anything like vernon does vernon we appreciate all the hard work you do over here guys if y'all want to be like vernon make sure you hop on the patreon and support this channel uh anyways um i forgot where i was going with this so yeah there's our twitter instagram uh letterbox also robert adams mlp chris adams mlp also guys make sure you give my brother a good hearty follow and subscribe over on twitch.tv slash Chris Adams MLP. Because, yeah, I know. I mean, we're really good at that. Uh, he, he he could use the Twitch followers and subscribers. And, 
you like us, right? I mean, really? I mean, do you like us? You do? Cool. Follow him on Twitch. Even if you don't watch video games, just give him a follow and a subscribe. So, yeah. Ha! We both try to do it at the same time. See? Stepping on toes. There you go. It's right there. Yep. All right. That's a, that's enough self promotion now. Uh, anyway, so make sure y'all do that as well, uh, guys. Well, thanks for. I will say real quick, actually, uh, because uh, I might be live tomorrow and I might be live on Friday. So definitely uh, make sure you're following me over there on Twitch and you can hang out with me, please, while I'm live. That's right. Rachel, while the rest of us are busy, hard at work, earning our paychecks, he's playing video games on the internet. It's because everybody else comes home and plays on Twitch in the evenings, and I am not going to gain any ground switching the same time as the rest of them. So. So if you happen to be at work in a job that allows you to have an internet browser open and your company hasn't blocked Twitch like mine has uh feel free to open a uh, at least a, a a tab on your web browser and let him uh stream and soothe your work day with his playful imaginings of pokemon or mario that's not all i'm gonna do on the channel <laughs> or whatever else you might do i don't i don't know twitch i don't i don't, I don't video games so yeah. anyways that's right you don't yeah, if y'all have ideas of what I could do on Twitch, I'm open to them. But I mean, I'm probably just going to sit there and watch YouTube videos, which is what I'm going to do as soon as this is done anyway. So, I mean, you know. <laughs> you don't have time uh, for Twitch. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I don't have time for, for what I do anyways. Uh, anyways, guys, thank y'all for watching tonight. Uh, thanks for being in the chat. Uh, everyone who's in the chat, we see y'all. Thank y'all for being here. Uh, we even see Movie Fenobi. With his Richard Donner's a legend, sad, but good life. Not, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Vernon saying, Chris, the gentleman, uh, well done on your video earlier today, sir. So if y'all don't know what I'm talking about, go check out the FCL over on twitch.tv slash the Snowdown. Or my Twitter. It's, or, or your Twitter. Oh, yeah, you did post that video to your Twitter. That's right. Yep. Uh, anyways, uh, so we got more stuff coming out. It's going to be a lot of fun. So thanks for following us thanks for being a part of the cine fam aj lancaster will like that i said that nice. uh anyways uh thank you also for dropping a like on this video uh commenting down below if you happen to be catching this on a replay and share this with your friends and family people who you want to show us off to will probably go better than the parents I've actually been shown off to before who like, anyways, feel free uh, to subscribe to the channel, not because of that, but because <laughs> of other reasons. Good Lord. Did you like that? Was it, was that good? Was that off the rails enough? No. Anyways, let's bring this back on the rails and let's end this program. Thank y'all for watching tonight. As for myself, as for my brother, as for my cat, who is yet to show up in the stream tonight, Sorry, wow. guys. I, I tried, but she wow. just didn't want to be here. Uh, wow. Thank y'all for watching. Y'all have a great evening. We will see y'all tomorrow night for the Loki Breakdown. Later. See ya.